Here we go, my next CRT adventure. This is a really old school one, if you guys read that here. It actually says, you guys cannot see it, probably, but it barely says, you can barely see it. I think I see 1977. Oops, excuse me, let me back up a bit. So, Sylvania, New York, 120 volts. <laughs> I don't know, there's a bunch of model number things. This thing's tiny. Um, she said it was a 19 inch, but definitely not. Definitely not. It's more like a, I don't know, a 12 inch. Let's let's get this thing put put together though. Now there she is, hooked up on the little stand I got here. It's really tiny, but look at how cool that thing is. The unfortunate part is going to be the connections. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get anything in this. It's from 1977. I don't know if we can go to the back. A way to turn on a flashlight, perfect. So we have these connections here. I may need to talk to Battletoad Overload about this. Anything else? I, I didn't see coaxial. I don't think coaxial had even been had even been um, invented yet. There's nothing back here, just a power and a few other little connections. I don't think I can use these. Let's take this thing off to get some better visibility. Very easy to carry it. It's really light, extremely light. Height, vertical. Okay, so look at that. <laughs> you can adjust the picture like right then and there. Let's let's plug this guy in. Let's plug this thing in. Ah, shoot. I really gotta adjust this. I need a power strip out here. I don't want to be unplugging. You know what? I don't. I don't want to be unplugging this quite yet. Let me get a power strip and we'll figure this out then. Well, I knew this day would come. So that's why when I was I was at this garage sale, they had a big free bag of various antennas and I should say connections and stuff like that. And then here's what I was looking for. You see the fork connections right there. There's some of those fork connections, which are gonna fit onto those. But here's what else I was thinking, guys. Like I said, I found this connection. But what happens if I unscrew this? I'm just wondering, gosh, would I get lucky? And would this be connected to coaxial? And I don't think so. But I don't have much stuff to connect wires like this to. This is weird. You can see some forks right there. Hmm. No coaxial, though. So last night, after I got done looking for those cords myself, I contacted my mom and asked her if maybe she had those cords. And it turns out that she does not. But she said maybe her sister does. And I hit up her sister, my aunt, and she said that she got rid of her old TVs, but she said, let me, let me go look for that hookup, because I sent her a picture of what I was looking for. It was the coaxial to the fork, so I'm going to have to use RF video to get that TV working. She hit me back about a half hour later saying that she has it, so it's a day later. We talked last night. We got done with work a little bit ago. I'm going to get on my bike to get free transportation. So you can see it uh, over here. Yep, there we go. We're going to get on the bike and head over there. So... It's about 30 miles away. Got a little bit of a hike. We're gonna go take care of that right now.
Time for a rest before we cross the river. Okay, this is the street. I remember they had this massive tree in the backyard. They used to have a tree, um, tree swing on it. So honestly, I don't even know the exact address, but I know it's on this street. I know that because I actually went to the wrong street. I'm gonna try to identify it by that big tree. And it's gotta be that one there. Okay. I'm gonna try it. Hi. I'm just watching America's Got Talent. Okay. Oh, it's hot outside. Ooh. It is. <coughs> Excuse me. You got it? Can you believe it? And I even that. found the screw in for it. What the heck? Yeah. That's amazing. It's can't pretty believe cool, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's crazy. Look at that. Nuts. Mission success. We'll see if we can get this thing to work when we get back. This is like an extra piece you screw on, this right here. So I'm thinking I gotta take that off because it won't fit right into the coaxial as it is. But hey, extra pieces are better than, than not, you know, you never know what you might need. So we're gonna simply put this right in my pocket, right next to my keys. And we're gonna go back the other way. Got a little hike back home too. When I was a kid, I remember my cousin took me into this coolie, and I was so obsessed with Mario, Mario 3. Remember I wanted to have the P power so bad. But anyway, it was really uh, kind of dangerous. Uh, we went into that little sewer where you, you know, it was dark in there and slippery, and I somehow didn't slip, I don't think, but we weren't supposed to be in there my cousins were so incredibly daring. I remember just looking up to them as if they were like invincible or something. They were both girls actually, by the way, too, that I'm talking about here in this story. But they were older than me and they were extremely brave in my mind. Back right where we started. The only difference is we have this. So we're not really gonna be able to find out right now if this is all gonna work. Because we need to bring an RF adapter out here and hook this into these forks. Let's get the flashlight. Right there, man. I'm gonna do it just like them, one here and one here. In fact, maybe I'll do some research on it first. I follow Battletoad Overload, but he never really explained exactly how to hook these in. So first things first, we need to find an RF switch. You know, recently I bought some Nintendos, I bought Super Nintendo 64s, and I think there should be an RF switch in my drawer. So will this work? NES control deck, baby. That's the one. So first things first, let's give this thing a little bit of TLC, do some cleaning on it. Alright, we gave it a quick once over, it's still very dusty, but it doesn't have to be perfect to play. Let's first of all just see if this TV even works, we don't even know if it works. So, I'm gonna just plug it in. This is a really long cord. This is probably, geez, eight to 10 feet. Uh, very long cord. So we're gonna grab this. And we're gonna skip over the PlayStation 5. <laughs> and we're gonna find an outlet. So this thing is, it's, you know, a little bit old and rusty. And geez, can we find an outlet? We got it in. It's plugged in. It was a little hard to do. Here comes the moment of truth. 
So I haven't used these for a really long time. But from my memory, the switch on the right was how you turned it on. <laughs> and that is, that's correct. Okay, turn it down. Okay, so that's how you turn it on, then you also turn it to the left or right to uh, turn it up and down for the volume. And I do see some fuzz forming. This TV, guys, probably hasn't been turned on for about 15 to 20 years. I got it from an old lady, and she said it's been sitting in a garage for about 20 years. Let's turn that down. So the real challenge is really going to be getting those getting those forks to work on this I still haven't done my research we could do a little bit more cleaning but this probably won't be something I keep in the house for a super long time either you know so first things first is we just want to beat Battletoads on it so with that in mind Let's get to the forks situation. This TV is literally changing the smell of my um, house. Wow. Yeah, it really is. Um, that can't be good, but we still got to get through this. UHF, VHF, here, UHF, VHF, FM matching transformer. UHF, VH, VH, uh, F, come on, focus, VHF, UHF, VHF, I mean, it doesn't say what's what, so I'm just gonna probably go boom boom, and see if that works, UHF on the bottom, VHF on the top, sound good? Is that, is, that, is that probably a good guess? I don't know. Gotta, gotta take out these here. Then I'll re-screw some better stuff on. I don't like how that one's still going into the TV. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little sketchy. We have a screwdriver here. This should be able to... Take these screws off. They're, they're actually in here pretty loosely. Very loose. Barely even need a screwdriver for this. This will be quick and easy. Wow, they're very loose. So you don't, you don't have to have them on very tight. This is just a severed wire. Maybe that's why it was burning so much. <laughs> Could be. Okay, I don't know what happened here. I don't want to strip it. Can I just pull it out? Well, I suppose we really don't need to get it all the way out, do we? Let's just take that copper piece out. There, the copper's out. We can shred that. We can throw it, I should say. Well, I unscrewed the piece that was on here. So I'm just gonna put that right into this. Screw it together. Now, the hard part has been done. We had to go pick up this piece. That's ready to go. I suppose the hard part's not quite done, is it? We need to screw these things in. And again, I'm looking at it, I don't see any indication of which which side is what. So, UHF, VHF, FM. Maybe it doesn't matter? Need some more light in here. Here, let me use my flashlight on my phone. Yeah, something's like burning on that TV, I think. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, that's, that's when, um, 
Radiation was a big concern, you see. Radiation was a big concern. Okay, so I'm examining this closer. Um, just for any fine print or anything like that. And I don't see any, any indication of what those are on here. Um, hmm. So, seeing none, we're gonna hook up the NES and just start just start doing some stuff. For safety, we're gonna turn the TV off. Um, maybe could even unplug it. I don't think that's necessary though, right? So we're not gonna unplug it while I work on these, but we're going to start unscrewing some stuff and then see what ends up happening when we put in the forks. Just realized, maybe I needed that copper to conduct stuff. Possible. Anyway, we're gonna do bottom and then top, correct? That's what my plan is gonna be. Doesn't, doesn't need to be super tight. Just kinda tight enough to keep it down. We'll have to see if this ends up working. There. Bottom and top. So that should be good to go. Let's turn the power on. Here goes nothing. Oh, we've tried every channel. Let's quit screwing around with this. I thought this would be a help. But now we know we'll get some audio helping us out. Maybe it'd give us to put us on the right track. It also looks like it's a black and white TV set, by the way. Whoa! Listen! It's the closest we've gotten so far. Well, can we beat the game without ha any any video? <laughs> See how far we can get. Wow, I've never tried a completely blind run. Audio quality's fine. Let's stop that nonsense. So I got a hold of Battletoad Overload himself, because I know he's dealt with these fork connections before. And he said, you have to hook up to the VHF connections, which I was not doing. So I've switched the connections around, and I messed with my top loader, and it, it, didn't, change the, it didn't change anything, but the audio is coming through crisp. So as a last ditch effort, I took out my NES toaster and I guess apart from changing the, the wires around um, basically the other way, you know, like I, they're, they're in the right spot, but 
it's possible I have to rearrange it. Apart from doing that, this is my last hope. So at least I know I'm doing it correctly. And if this doesn't work, I'm not sure really where to go from there. So let's take a look at that toaster. Ready for the moment of truth? Shit. The TVs are... Whoa! It's on! Damn! Okay, the NES is glitching a little bit. But this is the furthest we've gotten. So this is great. Let's uh, let's just go right again. That's an okay product. That's an okay enough thing. I don't like how it's kind of going up and down like that, but that's great. Where's the audio? <laughs> Look at how far down those are. Remember how that guy was talking about tilt? Hold on a minute, what, what do these knobs do? Brightness, okay. We gotta go on the back here. We can't have that much of the screen cut off. So, in the back here there is these knobs. Vertical in height. Oh my goodness. What the fuck was that? Oh, it's resetting itself right now. Okay. Yeah, that's these toasters. I don't have a great connection here. We're just gonna have to play it like this. See if we can even make it work past this, I don't know. Okay, so it's weird. Every time I try to get into the game, it does reset. It's very strange. That's really weird. I wonder why the NES knows to turn it off when I get to that point, point. Right, isn't that strange? Well... Like DJ Rudin said, let's start with Mario 1. Oh my gosh, look at this! Okay. You guys, they, I need to adjust this. This is absolutely insane. Here. This is Mario 1. So much of that screen is cut off. But at least we can play this. It's a black and white TV. Um, black and white TV from 1975. And yeah, we got a really... Adjust that part because I can't even see the guys coming. Let's do that right now. That was too much.
seem to have really fucked it up now. Now it's kind of going all over the place. It was broke, so I did have to fix it. I can see the Goomba now, so that that's good. It'd be nice if I could actually see what I'm doing when I do this. Oh, look! I mean, that's better than nothing. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, wow, this is so weird. Mario does not jump very high anymore. It's still playable. Um, but yeah, everything's very... It needs to be stretched upward more. But yeah, I mean, I could probably beat Battletoads as long as it would work. Should we give it one more go? Seems like we've worked out a lot of the TV issues here. I was gonna say, man, I used about six Q-tips. I did see some grime on the bottom part of the pins. Wonder if it's gonna be enough to get me pa into the game. Will it be enough to get me into the game? It still took like seven tries for the for the game for the NES to read it. Do we usually get this far? Usually, don't, I don't think we do. Wow, we did it! And look at how bad that looks. Goodness, we gotta go back to the drawing board. I might, I might just want to beat it as I as it is, if I even can. Well, this this is good. Okay, so the answer was just clean your freaking game. All right. Black and white. <laughs> no, no, notice how long that tongue was. There's definitely some weird stuff going on with this. Oops. I still get to keep my weapon? That's weird. Never would have thought that. No, no, notice how the aspect changed so much there. That was, that was also strange. This would be quite the adventure. We're losing a lot of lives already, though. Okay. Well, and I hate I hate to do this, but this 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 is going to be to be continued. Because I really need to get to sleep. It got super late here. As much as I'd like to continue, because I would. And that was also weird. Doesn't he take three hits? I think I only hit him twice. This game just seems broken. Um, yes, we're putting on the official Battletoads cartridge. You can look at it right there. So that's an official NES cartridge on a, to on a toaster. And it seems glitchy and weird, doesn't it? Got to keep my weapon after falling off the cliff? That was strange. Maybe this TV just has like some magical powers. <gasps> That's also really hard there. It'd be nice to change all of this stuff. The problem is now the, the, the um, horizontal here. Wait. No, hold, hold on a minute. It's probably the vertical here, I think, is actually the knob I need to press. And yeah, see, this is all messed up. It's getting, it's harder, because uh, I can't see where I'm supposed to be. I have a great idea. Let's let's get through the clinger winger and we're gonna call it there for the night. The further I move back, the less my neck will be strained, actually. 
And the NES has such huge chords. I'm thinking tomorrow when we play it again, we're going to have to do some work on the on the dimensions of the TV here. It's just it's too out of this world. We've got zero extra lives so far. Didn't even see that guy on the bottom either. Could I beat Battletoads like this though? I still think I could. Man, there's no way those 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 bugs are supposed to be that, those flies, I should say, are supposed to be that low. So much customization in the game. In, in the TV, I should say. That was my one chance to get extra lives, and we missed it. Well, it's now we know it's possible to do it. Just need to make some adjustments. The mind does weird things to a person. I thought I thought the TV was preventing me not from being able to progress further in the game. But of course the TV would not know. It's the system only. We're going to see if we can get through the turbo tunnel on this old sucker. <laughs> oh man, we definitely need to adjust these dimensions here. Alright, we'll take it. CRTs do not have input lag, guys. It's going.
Okay. Wow. Keep getting caught in that last one. Jeez, same time, every time. We must be able to beat it. What's going on here, Nate? Unfortunately, you gotta start over from the beginning uh, of the level when that happens. Okay. Yes! We did it! Clean your winger down. Part of me just says, geez, why don't I just go ahead and do it? Why don't I just go ahead and do the rest of the game? But I really got to get to bed. And we got to fix that TV and make it better adjusted. But hey, at least it's working. So that that's great. But yeah, to be continued, guys.